Hey there, this is Rick. I hope you're having a great day. In today's video, I'm going to be assembling my uh, telescope and uh, hopefully we're going to be getting it to work for the first time. Okay, so this is the telescope. This is the Explore Scientific AR152 and it is a six inch uh, refractor telescope and uh, it's pretty heavy, so I'm going to put it down. Now, one of the reasons I went for a, uh, a refractor telescope as opposed to uh, any other type is because, well, this particular model uh, had really good write-ups on the quality of the image that it can produce. Um, but secondly, you can use a refractor telescope as long as you've got a suitable uh, base. Uh, you can use a refractor telescope for astrophotography. So I, I'm sort of thinking I'm killing two birds with one stone. Now, there are going to be experts out there who are probably telling me I'm doing it wrong, and that's okay. Um, I'm literally, I am coming at this from a beginner's perspective, um, but I did spend hours and hours and hours reading up exactly what I needed to, uh, you know, the equipment I needed to get in order to carry out my plan. Now, my plan is to start off with just viewing astronomy i nearly said astrology then again um, astronomy and astrology i must must remember to know the difference um, i just want to purely uh, see things with my own eyes to start with and that'll give me the opportunity to find the stars to set up the equipment to learn how it all works uh, to get used to the setup because there is a bit of a uh, a faffing around that you've got to do to start with to set everything up um, and I, I thought I don't want to be getting involved with all the setup and then have to faff around again with all the equipment for the, the photography because um, it, it you know I can spend my entire evening just setting equipment up and never actually getting any anywhere so I thought I'm just purely going to be doing viewing first and I don't know how long that's going to be you know it might be a few months might be a year or more um, before I move on to astrophotography one of the most important things that I learned uh, through reading everything was to invest as much as you possibly could into the stand. Uh, the stand is incredibly important, um, especially a tracking stand. I always said right from the start I was going to get a tracking stand. Now the reason I went for a go-to system is because I don't want to have to faff about trying to find things. Uh, I think I could quickly grow tired of doing that. So I thought if I've got that covered, uh, then I can kind of really concentrate on just enjoying seeing this stuff um, rather than just, um, uh, you know, sort of spending all my time trying to find it uh, because I think I would grow tired of that really quickly. Um, and that's basically why I went for a go-to system. And of course, the astrophotography um, is, 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 is you need some sort of a, a tracking system um, for that to happen. So I've waffled on long enough. I think it's time to start putting this equipment together and seeing if I can make it work. So I'm not sure how long this is going to take. I might have to fast forward a few bits on. This is the stand and it has to point, you've got a little N on the top there and it has to point north. So there's the stand and uh, that's nicely in place. And now we need to get the, uh, the tracking head on. Okay, so this is the HEQ5 Pro and it kind of goes on there. There we go. This is an equatorial mount system, um, which from everything I've read and, and come to understand is the best bet for astrophotography. Um, there are all singing, all dancing uh, tracking telescopes you can buy that are on a, like a, a single arm but apparently they're not ideal for astrophotography because they're, they're just not accurate enough okay so that's nice and secure that's not going anywhere we got ourselves a little locking clamp here there we go okay next up is the counterweight so that's a little little thing comes out here we'll lock that off we'll take the end cap off and you've got these two really heavy weights that go on the end so there's one these are pretty heavy I'm not sure what the weight of them is there we go let's just put that on there for now and then we'll put this safety nut on that just stops them slipping off so as you can see this thing's pretty heavy um, which is good because it means you're not going to get too much wobbling around hopefully right these screws are for the vertical alignment and uh, you basically have to 
align this axis. There's actually a, a look thing through there. You can take this cap off and this cap off here. And there's actually like a, an alignment um, thing that you look up. And that basically points at the North Star. And uh, you adjust it using these things called uh, alignment screws. And these will alter the vertical alignment. Um, now in the UK, I do believe we are at uh, about 52 degrees. Uh, I'll look it up on an app at some point. There you go, that's about 52. And these two screws lock against each other, just lock it into place. So you can make fine adjustments later on. So you loosen one and tighten the other. So there we go. Now that is at um, 52. And then you just turn this around uh, until you can see straight through there. And then basically you've got this, uh, this little reticule that you look through. And uh, there it is. And at the moment, all I can see is my ceiling, of course. Um, but basically, there's a little circle in there, and you basically use the azimuth screws and the alternate, alter, you know, the altimeter. What's the word? The altitude screws uh, to get uh, the Polaris star right in the right position. Right now, I can put the scope on. Hopefully, there's nothing I've forgotten, is there? No. So this is just kind of like a a slide on shoe type arrangement. There we go. Right, that's the scope on. So that's so you can get lined up with the stars you're trying to find. So that's the eyepiece. Well, it's not the eyepiece, that's the, the go round corners bit. <laughs> that's a technical term by the way. Uh, okay, so we've got the go round corners bit and then we need an eyepiece in there as well. So I'm just going to put um, a wide field of view uh, eyepiece on, which is this one. Okay, so that's pretty much all the bits I'm going to have on there. So that's pretty well balanced. Put the scope straight and then we've got this left to right thing going on. So it needs to be not biased one way or the other. And that actually, that's not falling either way. That's, that's pretty well balanced. So I think we'll just lock those off and be done with that. Okay, it's just so that the motors aren't gonna be under too much strain moving this thing around. Although this is pretty heavy, this, this whole setup. So if I loosen off both of these now, the, the scope should be able to move in all kinds of directions. But this is where the, the whole equatorial mount thing comes in because be, because this is lined up with the North Star, if you're doing astrophotography, the only axis you need to worry about is this one. This one will track with the stars. Um, so you don't even need to worry about this one. Um, literally, you only need it for um, finding your star I presume but even if the stars over there you lock that off you're still tracking it with Polaris okay that's nice and nice and light now right moment of truth I'm gonna plug the handset in so this is the power supply uh, when I'm not near the van because I can use the leisure battery in the van for that. I basically got this. This is a battery box um, with a battery, a 12 volt leisure battery inside it. And uh, it's got full power, fully charged it up. You've got two terminals here on which you can charge it up. It's got a USB port at one end and a 12 volt cigarette lighter socket at the other. So that's, that's in there. That's that. And this is just going to basically plug in there. Right. Wish me luck. Okay, so it's all plugged in. I'm going to get the instructions. Okay, initialize the hand controller. Right, let's switch it on. It's on. It's on. Initializing. There we go. It's saying initializing. If you can. We can't see that, no. 
Ooh. It's making a buzzing noise. Like a high pitched whistle sort of noise. So, I've just, where are you? This one or this one? Okay, all right, I'll talk to you there. I've just spent the last ooh, hour or so just kind of getting my head around how this hand controller works. Um, I did film it, but it was a bit it was a bit long and drawn out and pretty boring, and I was doing a lot of talking to myself and uh, scratching my head. But I think I finally sussed it. Uh, basically, it, it gets you to set up uh, by pointing to where it thinks a star is, and then you just fine-tune to get that star right in the middle. Um, and then you sort of hit enter and then it knows where it is then, uh, which is quite cool. And then it's brought up this, this little list of places I can go and visit. So I've basically, I've got the, the local planets on at the moment. So it's, um, let's try, it's, it's offering me Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, Mercury, uh, or the moon. Um, let's have a go at the moon. So if I just hit enter, oh, the moon's below the horizon. Okay. So let's try a different one. Um, back. Let's try Mercury. That's tiny, isn't it? Let's try Venus. So Venus current. As it's given the current location of Venus. It says, "Do you want to view the object? Watch this. This is so cool. You ready? Enter. It's going there. It's going to show me Venus. How cool is that?" I'm reminded of that film, that Jodie Foster film, Contact, where she's this scientist um, searching for extraterrestrials. And uh, there's this one scene where she's basically sat on her car bonnet with a little laptop. And there's this massive array of telescopes behind her, these big dish arrays, like a whole sort of grid, grid of them. And she just, she just hits a key on her laptop and they, the whole array suddenly start kind of turning like this and uh it's kind of really impressive he just hits this little button and the whole thing sort of you know the whole field of these these telescopes turn around and it sort of reminds me of that there we go that's now looking at venus so um uh, technically hopefully uh so let's try a different one it's going to give me a deep ties deep sky tour here we go so the andromeda galaxy enter uh, let's have a look. Is it going to take me there or is it going to ask? View object? Yeah, go on, Em. So it's now going to show me the Andromeda Galaxy. How cool does that sound? Would you like to see the Andromeda Galaxy? That's just awesome. I got goosebumps. This is oh, cool. Talk about boys and their toys. This is just such a cool toy. And I'm hoping I'm going to get to see some really, really cool stuff. Now, I know really far distant objects are actually... Um, you know, you see these photographs of them and they're you know, in amazing color and they just look all gaseous and everything. I, I understand that that's not actually what you're going to see through the eyepiece. You'll just see a little gray smudge, um, if anything. But it's when you get into the astrophotography and you do the long exposures, that's when all the, the colors and everything come out. Okay, this is what the man in the shop said. Um, <laughs> He said, with a big long scope, you're going to need to attend yoga classes to be able to spend any time down there. Now, I've got a little, a little tiny little camping stool that I could sit on and watch the Andromeda Galaxy like that. But um, he said you can get a, a, a scope extension or, or a tripod extension. So that may be something I'll look into at a later date. But anything that you want to see that's you know almost immediately overhead, uh, you've got to kind of, you know, so they'd be right down here to see it. But uh, that's okay. I don't mind. I don't mind. I'm still quite flexible at the moment, so it's not going to be an issue. But if I get into this as, you know, as an old man, I might have to have a, a rethink. So I'll do one more then, just because of the thrill of it. Open cluster M35. The Pallades. Let's have a look at the Pallades. So, um, view object. Yes. So off it goes, and it's going to show me the Pallades. <laughs> oh my goodness, I cannot wait 
to get this outside actually let me check the weather tonight i'd love to get this outside in the garden tonight Ooh. let's have a look weather tonight is because if it is i can put it out there now and let it because you've got to allow it to cool down it's pouring with rain uh it's going to rain all night clouds oh no and then we've got cloud for the next seven days oh good grief the next 10 days <laughs> so i'll just have to sit in here and uh pretend <laughs> so there we go all right i think i think that's enough of that i think uh I'm I'm a happy bunny now. I've got it to work. I've just basically got to get it out there under the stars now and see what I can see. And another thing I did invest in is this little clamp. This is a clamp that holds your your iPhone or your your cell phone uh, up against the eyepiece. Let's get it right in the middle. Ah, there we go. Wow, I've got a I've got a a light in the middle. I'll show you that. Uh, unplug this a minute so there's the phone and you can see I've actually got it lined right up to the thing now I'm not quite sure how that's going to work focusing wise um, I'm sure oh actually it might just be a case of focusing uh, I don't know obviously I'm gonna have to experiment with that outside but hopefully that will be able to take photos. Obviously, I'm just looking straight at the ceiling at the moment, so there's not a lot going on there. But hopefully, if I'm seeing astronomical objects, I may be able to uh, photograph them on the phone. There's a little zoom, so you can zoom in. Uh, that could be good. Right, that's enough playing for one video uh, like I say it was just I was just wanted to put it together and make sure I could get it to uh, to work right and to track right and obviously the real test is going to be out in the field uh, hopefully um, uh, I can get this set up right and uh, it's going to be uh, really really good so I'm really looking forward to that so that's it for this video thanks for watching guys have a great rest of the day and I will see you in the next video take care Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed my video. Uh, please remember to thumbs up. Uh, you can subscribe here. Uh, here is my latest video, and here is a video that you might like. And here is a factoid. Cats have 32 muscles in each ear.